I'm going to start today's phone call with a friend who doesn't know that I'm going to call him. So there might not be an answer here. But it is imperative that at some point I do speak to him about this. Um, obviously, I'm a good friend. So assuming he answers, I'm going to let him know he's on the screen. <laughs> You know, just to, <laughs> to make sure nothing bad is said. Uh, let me let's 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 see if he'll answer. Also, I gotta make sure. Please leave your message. Ah! You know, I was going to say friend of the stream, but now, maybe not a friend of the stream anymore. No, you know what he's probably doing? He's probably painting minifigs. He has gotten fucking defeated, dude. <laughs> he is probably painting m little miniatures, which he has gotten into over the past couple weeks. So I understand if he's got a lot of paint going on, I wouldn't answer my call either. Um, but it's fine. Minifigs are cool. It's just something I'm not a very creative person. And also I don't have the patience for anything that falls in the arts and crafts department. So it is what it is on my end. Okay, so I gotta talk about why this game is on the screen right now. I just finished Strangers of Paradise several days ago, and I intend to move to a new action-y game, an action-type game in the near future. But if I don't get this done now, I will never get it done. And I will just keep putting it off to the point where I never get it done. And I want to get it done. I'm going... I did build the the Yu-Gi-Oh pyramid thing. You're correct. Very correct. And that is maybe my greatest life accomplishment because and maybe one of the reasons why it was difficult for me was because I don't have that kind of brain generally speaking. But you're right. I should give myself a bit more credit. But only just a bit of credit. Only just a bit. So I'm going to load this game up, but I have no idea what exactly I'm going to be doing. Because this is, see, if I was smart, knowing that I was going to do this on stream, I would have loaded up the game and been like, all right, let me take a look about what I need to do. No. The last time I played this game was exactly the last time I streamed it, which was probably several months ago at this point. What was it? Definitely last year. I don't know. You'd have to go check the archive, but, um, yeah, uh, I got to figure out. And the reason I was trying to call my friend. Okay. So the reason I was calling my friend, allegedly, I haven't technically seen it, but I don't have any reason to not believe him. He says, he says he has 100% at this game, but he also said it was very difficult and pretty time consuming. So I was gonna call him to try to get some tips or some direction about what I need to do for this. Because right now I am like a lost, I am a lost soul wandering around the uh, river sticks, I don't know. So give me like a few minutes to try to actually like orientate myself here and try to figure out what the fuck was the last thing I was in. I don't even know how to navigate the menus. I mean, I like the music. I like what the music's doing for me, but uh, I don't, is it touchpad? No, it's not touchpad. Is it triangle? Ooh, it is triangle. All right, I know how to open up the menu. See me next year when you're finished. 
No. See, that's the thing. I want to do this time efficiently. I want I want to do it time efficiently. And I need to figure out what that time efficient what what I need to do to be time efficient basically. Like I'm looking at this, I have no idea what I was doing last time. I probably even should have just watched I probably should have just watched what I did li like the last stream of this maybe. Oh boy. Okay, I know there's things to collect. Do the beast. Do, 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 do some pins to collect. Just search a speedrun guide. Hmm. That's. I don't know if speedrun guide, but I definitely need to look up some guide. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Why didn't I think of that? Let me see. That would be a good place to find a guide. I have the internet at my fingertips, and I don't know how to use it. Collection and completion tips. There are a lot of things to collect in the game. Pins, threads, food, CDs, and secret reports. Luckily, all of these things are tracked very clearly for you in the collection section. That's where I'm at. Uh, so you can use that to refer to what you're missing. Every item can be identified with a number. Sure. Okay. Hmm. Oh, you know what I should do? Where is... What chapter am I in? What am I on? Am I this one? What day am I on? That would probably be a thing I need to find. Where am I? Oh, I do just like the song, though. Am I in week day, week two, day one? Because it pops up like that? Or is there a different reason? What would be the way to check? Oh my god, I'm so fucking... I'm so fucking... You would not believe. No, this is... This game feels foreign all of a sudden to me because I don't know. I knew, I knew tonight's stream was going to be a rough one. Let's say that. Let's... Let's say that. Eliminate the target near Tokyo Plaza? Uh, find Neku amid the chaos? Oh no. Oh no. Sugumi swoops in and takes out the day's target? Oh boy, I'm... That's a good face. Okay, there's a lot of pig noise I didn't do. Was I trying to do pig noises? Something... Something reminds me that I was maybe trying to make take out pig noise. Like, that was the first easy thing I could see myself needing to do. Hmm... Hands up. Do the piece. Maybe. Okay, I'm gonna control F on this guide here. Take noise. Oh, this is this is guide is not good. Let's just try to do pig noise, I guess, right? How easy is it to... Let's just, uh... Let's just, uh... Let's just, uh, figure this out. 
Uh, I knew I knew the first I th- that was the hurdle, right? The, I knew the hurdle was going to be opening this game up for the first time in such a long time. And I'm hoping How do I fast forward? Yo. There's a way to fast forward, right? Fast forward? Uh-oh. I got a text message from the friend that I tried to call. He said he woke up from a nap. Now I feel bad. <laughs> okay i gotta at least respond okay there's gotta there's a way to sp- what, speed through this i know this or do i literally just have to press x like this like a madman that doesn't seem right at all. The revolution returns. Huh? That's new. Any- oh, I, dude, I forgot how Beat talks. Oh shit. You appear somewhat unwell of like <sighs> Lollipop? Oh wait. I found it. I just had to press all the buttons. I mean, this isn't obnoxious at all. So I can do this thing. Oh man, it's like I'm having to relearn the game. Oof. Oof. Okay. Uh. Am I gonna? Am I gonna remember how to actually fight? Wait, what's the specified? What's the specified? Okay, it looks like um, a dinosaur. Hmm? I think that was the one I needed. All right, let's figure out how to play. Now, a lot of teammates, we're, we're pack team, so that's good. Okay, I got us. Time is mine. Great job. to me, yo. I'm impressed. I should probably see what the um That was perfect. Let me out. Uh-oh. Okay, I should probably look into what all the pins that I've got attached actually do. Did you see that? Follow me, yo. Nice work. Let's keep it up. I'm impressed. Not bad, I'd say. The wicked twisters are on top. Ring a ling. Okay, I think that's all I had to do to get past this gate. So I gotta find the pig noise. Okay. Somewhere in the chapter. I think the easiest thing to even like just warm up will be doing all the pig noise. It'll allow me to ca- like figure out how to. Oh no, <laughs> friend. <laughs> friend of the stream might actually be calling in here in a second. <laughs> Sup? Okay, I think I have to go kill that one. Um, where? How, Let's have a look. That's this thing, right? I guess I could go around or two. We got this. Okay, let's figure. Oh, I was gonna check what the pins do. Oh, 
be unstoppable. Yeah, sure, hope so. Oh, he's getting grabbed by the ghoulies. It's over. I like it. That was easy. Well done. We got this. We got this. Have a nice life. So far, so good. Let's keep it going. Thanks, Bones. Aren't you glad I'm back? Oh, I forgot just how moody and cool he is. What a miss. Oh, hey, a new pin. See, this is good. If we get new pins, that's also good. So if we start collecting, like, pins along the way, only is good for us. Um, okay, let me check what I have equipped. Actually, I'm gonna go to a collection, right? Because then... Give me, give me a chance. Do, do, do. Give me a chance. Boo. Grizzly. The shockwave. Okay. Cool. So if we get pins on the way, very good. This is... So, rapid tap square. Is there another square? Yes. So I got two squares. Cool. Rapid tap triangle. Okay. And then an R1 and an L1 are on charges. Electric wire. Okay. And then, uh, like an R2 hold beam. Okay. 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 Now I'm going here. Oh, I thought that was gonna access that blocked off area, but that's not how this works, is it? Let's move! It's not how it works, is it? I just gotta find the pig noise symbol, right? You know what? I could probably search online for pig noise guide, couldn't I? Pig noise guide? Um, so that I'm not completely wasting my time, potentially. We need to be time efficient. What day are we on? Week two? Week two, day five. Day five. Expressway underpass? Did I already get that one? Expressway underpass. Oh, I'm getting the call. Okay, let's let's go to let's mute those. Okay. All right. Hello. First, before you before you say anything, mm -hmm. you are on stream, so don't say anything that could incriminate you or reveal your deepest darkest secrets. All right. Like the time that we kissed that one or ten times. Very passionately, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, I I think I've talked to you briefly about this subject before. Um, I just recently finished finished Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origins. It was a pretty, mm -hmm. it was it had some good moments, but it was a pretty mid game. I want to start a new actiony type game, but mm -hmm. before I did that. I was like, you know what game I need to finish 100% before I move on to that game or else I'll never get it done. Kingdom Hearts 2. That's right. It's Neo the World Ends With You. Oh, I was very close. Actually, I was shockingly close. <laughs> you were shockingly close. I <laughs> I knew this first time getting back into the game was going to be rough because I loaded up the game and didn't even remember how to open up the menu. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, now I need to remember how to actually play the game and figure out what the hell I was doing. 
I obviously could look online for like a guide to try to help me. But I, I, I was saying this earlier, as someone who is who allegedly 100% of the game, I can't, I, I never actually was able to, you know, con fact check you, but I take your word for it that you 100% of the game. As someone who has done that, but also said that it was a pain in the ass to do, do you have any like hindsight is twenty twenty or hindsight is what's the phrase? Hindsight is hindsight is perfect sight. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah. Um, hindsight is perfect sight. <laughs> that works too. You should start using that one so you can make some merch for your channel. Yeah. Hindsight. Hindsight is hindsight. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any recommendation for where I start or what's the best like time saving? Uh, tactics or where do i begin i i loaded up the game and i don't know i was in a chapter but i don't know why i was in that chapter so i just backed out and i was like i guess i'll find some pig noise that i missed but that's all i've done so far i started going and try i looked up like a pig noise guide to find where those things are so you're in the the post game then like you beat the the game game you're just doing all the post game cleanup I've done. I've beaten the game. I've done the another day thing. Um, it is literally just post game stuff. So I assume it's a lot of collection, and then any boss stuff at some point if that's part of it, um, and whatever else is needed. Yeah the the boss rush and the I think it's in the another day thing that little boss rush that you can get at the end of the street. Uh, I can't remember the name of the street right now. That's going to be your best friend up until the point where. You're getting to like the last couple of, uh, the last couple of boss pins that you need, and then on several of those boss pins, uh, you cannot get them through the boss rush. You have to go play through the entire day. Uh, the most annoying one being, there's a a pin. Well, the two most annoying ones being there's a Mr. Mew pin that you need to finish up. Uh, the I can't, the black cat set uh, that you have to get from a very specific boss fight with Mr. Mew that it is not the one that you do in the boss rush. Uh, and then the motherfucking uh, jellyfish noise one. You remember there's like one mission in the middle of the game where you have to time, like hop back in time like five or six times because you have to fight these jellyfish noise in the park. I vaguely remember it where there was like, they kept like, was it breaking apart or something? Or... Yeah, it was like the, it was, they were too strong for you to fight, and then it was they were too weak for you to fight. And then the third time, it was like, oh, now they're just right for you to fight, and it'll have a positive effect on the future. Okay, and, and you're it's, saying it's, it's, that's it's, a pain in the ass. That's the one. That's the part that almost made me quit. Uh, Are you talking because of like it? drop rates? It's not drop rates. It's that you have to go through basically the entire... Oh, the drop rate is annoying, yes. But uh, the drop rate combined with the fact that you have to go through basically the entire day up to that point if you don't get it. Uh, and that the... Uh, I, I can't remember if that was... If I was being stupid and I could have save scummed it or if there was some annoying anti-save scumming thing for that particular part of the game. But I was literally going to say, wouldn't you be able to save scum? Yeah, I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to remember because I know I hated that part the most, and I know that I did use save scumming, but I can't remember if like that was my breaking point where I was like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna save scum," uh, or if there was something around that that prevented you from save scumming. Okay, and then other than grinding for pin drops, did you ever have to dr grind for a bunch of money or levels? Did you feel? Levels, no, uh, but that's mostly because I did the boss rush stuff first, and by the time I got through all the, each of the levels of, uh, like, easy, normal, hard, and ultimate for the boss rush, I was already, like, way stupid over-leveled. Mm -hmm. uh, so that did end up being an enormous issue. Uh, the big one, what was it? There's something oh yeah uh and then finding and mutating all the pins having to swap party members in and out because certain pins will only mutate with certain party members so it's kind of annoying too oh god i forgot about like mutating pins and everything mm -hmm. and there's there's oh. a, something you can get way later on uh, it might actually be in the another day and you might actually already have it 
uh, where it will tell you like what party member needs to have what pin equipped in order to mutate it. Um, but trying to do it before that, just trying to do it blind is, 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 is not worth it. Okay. Um, I know times can vary, but do you think I'm looking at like many, many, many hours now at this point? I mean, what's your completion rate on your thing? On just the collection thing? Um, Tab? I, I guess, yeah. 79.4%. Yes, you have many, many hours. <laughs> is it just time consuming or is it actually difficult? It's just time consuming. There, there are a couple. Have you got all the boss pins? How would I know what are boss pins without just looking? Is there anything in the collection screen that shows it's a boss pin? Because uh, nothing okay. is jumping out at me as a boss pin. Unless they just look like regular pins. Mostly the boss pins are at the end of the pin list. I'm pulling out my switch. I'm going to say I probably don't have any boss pins just by the looks of it because at the right, end man. of my list i have a bunch of those like money ones mm. and then the uh, items in that case some of the ultimate uh versions of the boss fight stuff are pretty friggin difficult uh, they're fun like it's fun. the one that leaps out in my mind is the uh what's his name uh the the big deer guy the guy with the, the deer noise the flipping guy shirt. yeah uh he uh his ultimate version of his boss fight where it's like the big sheep guy sitting in the middle of a uh out of a parking lot mm -hmm. uh, that one was really really hard but also like it was one of those boss fights where when i finally got it i was like hell yeah i'm the best at video games so i'm only gonna get the boss pins if i beat them on ultimate to beat the bosses once on every difficulty to get each of their pin drops oh yeah oh <laughs> and the ultimate difficulty drops are, are not guaranteed at all uh, unless you like really I, you can help your chances obviously by lowering your effective level uh, yeah but the, then you get killed really easily obviously oh my god i was so gung-ho on doing this back when we first played this game and then mm. i was so gung-ho as like a concept as like an idea in my head and now looking at it and loading into the game tonight i'm like there's half of me that goes is it worth it and yeah, then half of me not. going did i really want to do this mm. it's it's I, I'm glad that I did it when I did it, and that, and it was mostly because uh, I was listening to a huge backlog of podcasts at the time when I was doing all of the the grindy aspects of it. Yeah, uh, and so I was able to get through like several seasons of uh, uh, what was that one that I was listening to, uh, Magic Tavern and um, a Bim Bam and a couple other podcasts because I was just like doing nothing but doing that and playing Tweewee. Okay. So would you definitively say me going for the 100% the platinum on this would definitively not be fun for me? Uh, yeah, especially if you're doing it in the capacity of a stream. Like, unless you have some sort of secret backlog of, like, an extremely long story that you want to meander your way through <laughs> for your audience, uh, that... <laughs> Could potentially feel like oh. five or six episodes of you doing nothing else but telling that story and grinding for pins. Because the things that would stop me now, or that would, the, the the reasons I would do it now after getting like loading into the game and immediately like my feelings changing right now. The only reasons I would I go to do it is because I said that I would do it a long time ago, and I'm a very stubborn person, as you know, especially when it comes to certain video game stuff, but. But also, um, like, almost, like, sunken cost fallacy type things. Because, obviously, I put in a lot of work throughout the game last year 
I wasn't just speeding through all the chapters, you know? So do I do it? Because in my head, I go, well, I've already technically threw in a lot of time to complete some of this stuff. I mean, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's the, the 100% completion is such a pain in the ass. And like, I guess some of the, uh, the, the secret reports are cool, but not cool enough to justify the hours and hours and hours of my life that I threw at it. <sighs> I, I, oh, what was the other game recently? There was an, oh, this one, it wasn't super recently, but Death Stranding. Death Stranding, my favorite game of 2019. I, I took a little break from after I beat it. And then months later, I was like, I'm going to come back in, load in, and get the platinum. And then it similarly, I looked it up like a guide of like what it actually entails. And it was like, you have to play for hours and hours because it's not only do you have to do a lot of things perfect. But it's grindy as hell, and if you don't, like, it it was just going to be such a time sink. And I, it was the same feeling where I was like, man, I was so committed to doing this, and then stepped away, and then came back, and was like, oh, no, I can't do it. And it was like a full 24 hours before I was at peace with myself for putting that game down. And knowing that I wasn't going to get it, even though I was so committed to doing it. And now I'm almost feeling the same thing here. I have three of the secret reports right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you got it. <laughs> No, you, dude, and it did sucks. You ever, uh, did you do the another day secret boss with the uh, show? Uh, I mean that doesn't immediately ring any bells. I don't know if that's because I haven't done it or I just it was so long ago. Uh, I mean, it, you you'd know it if you did do it, I guess. I mean, I it did another really... day, but you're saying there's a secret boss in there? Yeah, there's it's a secret boss fight against like a shadow version of Show Me Naruto. Okay, that doesn't ring bells. Um, and you're saying, is that, are you saying that that's a fun thing or that's another pain in the ass thing? Uh, an enormous pain in the ass thing. Yes. <sighs> there were lots of, there was lots of me, like, lots of gnashing of teeth and beating of fists, especially on the ultimate version of that boss fight. Man. God, and it sucks because I loaded into the game and other than me being utterly confused and pressing so many buttons to try to load up, like, the, the main menu uh i i you know like how you can select what your main menu like music is based on any of the music tracks you unlocked and stuff uh, fucking got the track that i really really love from the song the fucking uh what's it called the o parts thing and that was playing i'm like and then some other music track was playing in the world and i was like oh dude i fucking remember loving this shit this was so fun and then i started i was like and then i started looking around at the the map and i'm like all right where the fuck am i going what am i doing and then i get into a battle and I had all six characters, and I was like, oh, no, how the fuck do I play this? And I was like, what pins do I have equipped? And then that's when then you were like, here, let me get headphones so I can call you. And now this just makes for a very sad potential conclusion to this game and series because now I'm debating. Now I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I might be swayed not to even waste. Like, not I don't want to say waste, but even attempt it. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't want to say waste or else you'll hurt the game's feelings. It, it's like my fucked up brain says waste my own or hurt my own feelings, you know, because like I said, I was so fucking set and gung ho on doing this at some point. I knew I was going to come back to this at some point. When when random tangentially related question. Yeah. Uh, when you were a kid and you were listening to an album, mm -hmm. would you feel bad if you skipped a song on the album? Would you feel bad for the song that you skipped? Um, You're saying specifically as like a kid? As an adult, I mean, still you. feel bad is probably not the right word. I, on first listening, if I pick an album, like I want to listen to the album, I'd feel bad on first listen. If I skipped anything, I'll listen to it front mm -hmm. to back. After I've listened to it once all the way through, I would never feel bad. Um, if anything, I, I would want to listen to it all the way through just because of my, like, I, I hate to say it and phrase it like this, but like my, the OCD part of my brain is like, I don't want to potentially miss something on the album the mm -hmm. first time through. Uh, but not because I would like feel necessarily bad though, even less tangentially related. I remember going as a family, big family unit. Uh, when I was a kid, there was a inside, not inside joke, but like a story that was a thing. I remember this happening. We all went to like some kind of IHOP or Denny's cause we were like on the road or going to some family vacation or something. And my younger brother got like one of those pancakes with the faces on it. 
and then only ate like half of it and someone older than him or one of my parents tried to like guilt him into eating a bit more because like oh you know finish your food kind of thing and mm-hmm. someone said the ta- said the phrase like if you don't eat him he'll be sad because it was like a face you know so it was like anthrop- mm-hmm. anthropomorphizing this this <laughs> pancake with a face on it and then we started wrapping up the meal and then we start getting up from the table and he starts like crying because (laughs) because because someone (laughs) because someone like he was young he was pretty young but like gave like this like almost a, a sentient uh, being in in the in his eyes that the pancake was a real life thing that had feelings and it was going to be sad that it was not being eaten and just thrown away kind of thing and that like stuck around our family as a story up until all the you know up current times and it's very funny to look back at well that's the dangers of anthropomorphizing food to children i suppose they should never have put vases on pancakes yeah i had a friend growing up who uh, to this day, has to eat every grape if she gets a uh, uh, bunch of grapes because her mom said that any grapes that are left over on the bunch that don't get eaten will be lonely. And it's a, it's burned in her brain that if she doesn't eat all of the grapes, then the leftover grapes will be lonely and she just can't have that. You know, it sucks in life when your parents did something to you at, I'm not trying to get super deep here, but do something to you as a kid that like scars you. But it's like a double kind of pain when that thing is very silly and <laughs> very stupid. Mm-hmm. But that's very funny. She, so to this day, like she, if she gets like handed a bunch of grapes, she wouldn't want to leave one back. Yeah, just gotta gotta finish them all off to make sure that all of them end up happy and eaten. Which, now that I'm thinking about it, why would food be happy if you ate it? That just seems like a horrifying experience for them. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think about all the shitty movies that had, like, talking food and stuff. And they try to they por- try to portray that uh, mostly not well. Um, did I... You said you woke up from a nap. Did you... Were you, like, sleeping recently? Like, all day, or...? Or are you back to like uh, like troglodyte like hours of being up now because you're I, at work? I wasn't planning on falling asleep, but uh, I I have been painting basically all day uh, and dealing with the dogs. And then Christine got home and she got up to uh, Overwatch, mm. uh, and then I was like, well, I don't feel like painting. I don't have anything that I want to watch, and so I just sort of laid down on the couch for lack of anything better to do. And then woke up about three hours later. Oh, okay. Um, did you see any of the new Pokemon stuff today? I did. I really like Smallish. He's my favorite. I saw some of the new... I saw, I guess, all the new designs. I guess they only showed, like, a few, you know. I think yeah, what, some crazy. random ones and then, like, the legendaries the or something. Clone, the, first, the first route normal and then uh, the Smallish. I know people like the pig thing. Um mm-hmm. And then the one thing that stuck out and I saw everyone memeing about was the very attractive, in my opinion, attractive professors. And I was thinking back and I was going to try to make some joke. I was, I, it, this is one of those things where I was going to make a threaded joke on Twitter, but then I was like, uh, that's too much effort where I was going to take pictures of every professor through every generation and just, but mostly try to point out that as far as I can remember, ever since I mean, we had Professor Oak and then Professor Elm, who, you know, some people would be into Elm, but, you know. Mm -hmm. But, like, since then, they have only, I think, massively intentionally made them more and more attractive. It is, like, painfully, like, there was the guy from the, not Hawaiian, but, like, the island one who's just, like, shirtless with just a lab coat on. uh, Mm -hmm. Fucking. Sycamore from Gen 6 was my favorite. The French dude with the crazy hair. Yeah. There was a other like mommy type professor in one of the Juniper. Juniper, yeah. And then these ones, you have like you have like that Chad meme guy, like mm-hmm. basically same thing. And then you have like buff step on me <laughs> professor. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Like, what is up with that? But yeah, I thought that was very funny. Um, I mean, Rowan kind of bucks that trend from from Gen Four, the angry mustachey dude. Yeah. Okay, that's good, and I kind of forgot about him. But he's also like compare if you throw him next to Oak, he's like more grizzly attractive old guy compared to like yeah, Oak, right? Like a silver fox thing compared to Oak. Yeah, I would say that from five onward, they've been making their professors hotter. Because five was Juniper, six was Sycamore, seven was uh, I can't remember his fucking name, the the shirtless dude. Or wait, no, was eight the shirtless dude? No, gen I can't keep the gen shirt. straight. So seven, seven was the the shirtless dude whose name escapes me. Uh, and then the professor from this most recent gen was a pre- preposterously old lady that was replaced by a young hot redhead. <laughs> it's just such a. I mean, I don't care. And I mean, ever since I, I, I think I had made. I was trying to find if I had made the tweet. And I think I did. Ever since the whole big blow up with Resident Evil, when they had the you know tall vampire lady guy person, mm-hmm. like I was very much. I was like, video games. You could learn from this if you. Un- like intentionally unapologetically sc- put any kind of horniness into your game it's totally fine the general gaming public is okay with it mm, did you see the the discourse about the the new marvel she hulk series no what is that so apparently well the, if, if you've seen the trailer the the she hulk character uh a kind of looks like shit and b is not as buff or big as people were anticipating. And according to the team that did the work on the She-Hulk, uh, they kept getting feedback from the studio saying, like, no, make her less big, no, make her less muscular, like, leaner, smaller, that type of thing. And people on the internet are like, did you not pay any attention to the Lady Demetrask stuff from when Resident Evil was out? Like, the internet wants... An enormous muscular woman, like that's what they want. They do, you, and you can learn. It, I, there was, I, I mean, I can't pinpoint the exact time, but there was a. I mean, maybe it's just the people we hang out with, you know. But there was definitely at some point. I mean, obviously, you could go back and probably look, find, get much more interesting and more in depth into like the shifting of time and like culture and like what people find you know attractive, and you can find that in like how models are portrayed and everything. There's all that kind of thing. But mo- just speaking about, like, internet people that we hang around, there at some point was a shift in, like, no, nah, we, like, buff, like, muscular, fit, working out, like, visible muscles kind of people, I feel like. Mm. No, I, I'd agree. I think there's been an enormous cultural shift in the favor of that. Uh, although... To what degree that's reactionary to the... Well, I won't get into the... the, (laughs) uh, Political side of the internet, but there is a certain... Sure. A certain type of man that's out there being like, uh, muscles bad, icky poo-poo. And then people being like, you think muscles bad? I have muscles. And other people being like, ooh, muscles. And then the first guy being like, Oh no, my my stupid troglodyte brain. I think I think I would probably go. It's probably a shift in like because probably people equate muscles to like I am an independent type person. I, you know whether that's a hundred percent accurate all the time or not. That's probably what they equate, and it's so it's a shift from like the the traditional subservient like oh i'm weak and frail and need a guy to help me to like the oh this is a woman that could go out and kill someone like meat for the harvest or fucking whatever you know and then the guys are like okay you, now now i need a girl to help me you carry me home Put yeah me i just i just <laughs> that's kind of where i'm at almost i'm like i need someone to uh who isn't afraid of some vitamin d and can carry my little hunched back you know to the our next uh, I don't know. Fucking the next you go, place we'll go. You go on a hike with your your beautiful muscle girlfriend, and about halfway through you get tired. You just hold your arms up and say, "Ucky, ucky, please." Yes, exactly. Um, this this is gonna end up being a great video because it has essentially turned into a shitty two man podcast instead of me actually starting the journey to hundred percenting new. And basically, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna hang up the phone with you at this and be like, "All right, well." 
this was great. You know, this was a good idea I had. But um, the last thing before I let you go, unless you wanted to keep talking and me bug you, is um, I don't think you probably have because I think you would have told me about it. But I talked, we talked uh, texting about the uh, the inside bonus uh, cut footage. Have you watched that? Oh, yeah. I just watched that today. Oh, was it good? Uh, I liked it. Uh, the... I'm, I assume it's not going to have a cohere, like a, co- like a cohesive, like, what's the word I'm looking for? But, like, story. It's not, it's just cut yeah, content, it's, right? It's it's cut content that's been arranged some, somewhat logically. I mean, as logically as the original Inside special was arranged. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the... Uh, the music stuff was kind of and it's just sort of like raw cuts of the music uh, from the actual special uh, but there are a bunch of really neat cut uh, skits uh, like very a lot of very meta stuff that I guess he decided not to go with like obviously the 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 inside the game from the actual special was pretty meta and it's a lot more skits in that kind of vein oh, okay interesting um I want to watch it but I I, I, I definitely, for some reason, like I had, it's weird because I, with the news of this, it also was the news and reminded me that it was just a year ago that it came out. I'm like, fuck, it felt like forever ago, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I also took back, like when I realized that I was also like, man, I remember how much that, like, I know it's probably cliche and everyone who probably watched it and considered them a fan of what it was and stuff probably would say it. But it fucking, like, weirdly hit me. And I remember how much it, like, weirdly took out of me because intentionally it had so much to do with the pandemic and locked certain lockdown things and people being more secluded and stuff. And I just remember being like, oh... Like, I, it's almost like this thing where I'm like, I know it's just cut content, but, like, do I need to, like, be in a certain headspace to dive back into it, potentially? Um, I, would, I would say no. Like, it, it still has those hallmarks of, of what made Inside kind of depressing. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, it, it's disjointed in a way where it's not going to hit you in the same feels. Okay. Anyways. And then two things about this. One, I remember our discussion because this was like a shower thought where then I was thinking about it. And I was like, man, I remember when you and I talked about it. And it's like Bo Burnham at this point really, for lack of a better term, like painted himself into a trap. Like literally it's you can't come back to like the norm more. I say heavy quotes, normal stuff like normal stand up probably so easily because ever since a certain point like he's just been one upping himself it feels like in like this you know kind of art for me type thing and it's just like it would be so weird if in like two or three years he comes back and he's like all right i'm just back on stage doing a special well i i think that the reality of it is he's going to either continue to make this like weird meta commentary art stuff or he's going to kill himself Man, that's definitely a thought that crossed my mind at some point, and I just, like, obviously it's a super dark thought, and, like, I wouldn't wish that, obviously, but, man, I I definitely had thought that at some point, and I think it was because I was, when he posted on Twitter and when I came across it, when he made the announcement, like, oh, there's extra an hour-long content, you know, cut, whatever, and just, as I do on Twitter, if I'm curious just what the general pulse of random people on the internet is i'll go into like what people are replying on twitter and like yeah. seeing just a ton of people and just then just tra- like taking all these people and then just being like okay now what if it came out that like something bad happened and it's just like mm-hmm. fuck but <sighs> you can't eat that dog get out of here and then the second thing related to this is i, I think it was yesterday um me and my small team at work we were talking about like oh is anyone watching anything interesting because we a lot of the times when we're just trying to like shoot the shit through teams uh messaging we're like oh did anyone want watch anything interesting like streaming or whatever and <laughs> everyone's talking about oh you know the newest season of stranger things uh whatever whatever and then i on a whim was like oh uh i don't know if you guys watched it last year but the special from inside bo burnham did like a special inside and he a year later is saying that he's put out more like content that was cut from the special and the only message that got in response was my boss being like 
oh, I've never heard of that. You'll have to tell me how that is. <laughs> and me just in my head. Get back to your boss and say, profoundly depressing. Thank you for asking. <laughs> it was that. And then also in my head, my thought was like, you uncultured swine. How did you not hear about this thing last year? Everyone saw it, you know, kind of thing. But obviously I know that's inaccurate. But like there was a part of me that was just like, what do you mean you didn't hear about this thing yet last year? God. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the weird things I've been seeing, because I, I also like to press on that bruise of Twitter commentary where I'm like, I know that if I open up this fucking thread... I'm going to see stuff I don't want to see. Thing, yeah, and it's going to make me angry. And yeah. I know that's going to happen, but I still do it. Uh, and I, see, I saw a bunch of people, uh, maybe not a bunch of people, a bunch would be an over-exaggeration, but people saying like... Uh, like you like Bo Burnham now, but like wait until he goes the way of John Mulaney. And I'm like, what about Bo Burnham <laughs> would make you think that he would go in the dirt? Like, what? Why would you think that the public's opinion would shift in the same way on Bo Burnham that it did on John Mulaney? Like, I, I don't even know. It's just why what a weird are, thing to say. <laughs> Yes, no, exactly. Like a and weird, like, and yeah, a weird parallel to make. It's like, I, I guess they sort of appeal or slash appealed to similar parts of the internet in, in John Mulaney's heyday and in Bo Burnham's heyday, but also like they're two very different people with two very different styles of comedy and very different like internet personas. And I, I don't, it, it just seemed like people buzzwording for the sake of buzzwording where it's like Dude, you know who's I, in the news john mulaney he's a comedian and so is Bober. i i'm pretty sure most people are only able to group comedy into like three categories which is to say uh the for this group we're talking about like white guy for lack of a better term thinking man's comedy you have mm-hmm. you then have the really shitty like you might be a redneck and the guy who does like puppets and then <laughs> loud, loud comedy, loud. <laughs> shitty comedy and then and then and then you have like i don't know some random third group <laughs> but like i'm pretty sure people just why would you why would you take yourself into the corner of, of three types of comedy and then say two types of comedy okay do you do you want to know the exact reason why is because in my head as i was saying the first two groups i knew there was a third group i wanted to say but mm-hmm. before I now say it, I'm th- I was mulling it in my head as I'm saying the first two groups, and I don't like how the third group would sound as me saying it. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm on recorded like you know video here, so like I, there was a part of me that was like, oh, I don't obviously mean it as like a, a, how it would potentially come off as offensive, but of course, hearing back, I could I'm like I know I could if someone could misconstrue it, someone will kind of thing. So I'm so so it's self censured, and I wished you wouldn't have said anything. <laughs> so to draw more attention to it, but to honestly, you should have called me out on it because I did very awkwardly say three groups, and then the third group came, and I just said. Soft boy comedy, loud comedy, and my favorite comedy, <laughs> racist comedy. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna all i'm trying to say is that people are very bad at like grouping things yeah especially when it comes to like art or anything that i mean pretty much you could make the argument for literally anything but uh, especially frustratingly art people are unable to like they just feel the need to group and then when they group they group incorrectly there, there was also a lot of people on that same comment thread saying, like, Bo Burnham isn't a comedian. Like, he's, he's not funny and stuff like that. Uh, yes, I can do that. Uh, he's not funny. And people arguing against that saying, like, just because it's not something that you find funny doesn't mean that it can't be counted as comedy. It is very clearly comedy. It, it fucks some of the conventions of, like, like normal comedy would be considered. Uh, but it is, like, undeniably comedy. He is a comedian. Yeah, yeah. 
Speaking of him, I don't know if it was you I was holding this conversation with a while back, but he had an MTV show that got pretty swiftly canned, uh, like years ago when he was younger. Um, I forget what it's called immediately off the top of my head, but apparently, if you ever like go back, like pe- if you ever find people talking about it, people talk about how it was like way ahead of its time at the time, and it was like a type of humor that people weren't like vibing with at that time exactly. But, like, if you go back now, it, like, apparently hits exactly what, like, the current trend of humor is. And I'm always curious to be, like, trying to find it somewhere online and try to see if it's actually good. Like, it's a scripted, com- like, scripted comedy show. I, I, oh, now that you say scripted comedy show, that kind of does ring a bell. I, I can't remember. I did learn that apparently post the, the famous uh, trial verdict that apparently O.J. Simpson had a prank show people i am still to this day shocked anytime i see oj simpson i'll just say like out and about or at someone because apparently oj simpson's i don't obviously follow him on twitter but i know people do and every once in a while i see someone like quote tweeting like his shit like a video where he's just talking to his phone and then putting it out and i'm like i am shocked we as a society have just we have to just accept that it's fine. It's just a weird situation. Very it's, strange. It's bizarre. And his his prank show was, because like I said, it was after the trial verdict, after most of America was convinced that he was a murderer. Uh, a murderer. And so he would pull these like elaborate pranks and then reveal himself at the end of it. It's like, hey, it was just me, O.J. Simpson. And most of the people looked more scared because yeah. not only were they just pranked, they were standing in the room with a guy that got away with murder. Oh, I would think at that point, if O.J. Simpson, right, especially right after that, came out and said, oh, you're on a prank show, I would think it's like a meta prank show. And it's like a prank show. It's a prank show inside of a prank show. And like the the ultimate prank is that it's a, a prank show hosted by O.J. Simpson. And I would be like, oh, this is really strange, but very clever. Like, oh, this is. But then. I mean, I hear that or it's like a, a Poughkeepsie tapes kind of thing where it's a prank show that he is filming himself to put on a a VHS shelf in his closet to record all of the people that he has serial killed. Yeah. 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 What a, what a strange where direction we went. Like I said, I'm going to like hang up this call. And like I said, this episode is mostly just like a, like a over the phone podcasty thing. Where then I ultimately could decide that this just isn't yeah, are you for me. Just, like dicking around in the overworld and uh, Neo Twiwi as we talk. Oh, even worse. Uh, literally just looking at some of the clothes, clothing options. Um, mm. I, I, some PVC pumps, uh, some chuka boots, mm. and mm. some asymmetrical mini skirt that honestly, an attractive person could really pull off. You know. You're going to get yourself a, a, a mini skirt. I mean, I'm not attractive, so I couldn't pull her off. Yeah, but the thing that's really in right now is being able to see your, your danglers underneath your mini skirt. My danglers? Uh huh, your danglers. <laughs> Dude, I had to go to the office today. And I didn't even try to like dress up nice because it's at a point where like anyone that goes to the office, no one's no one's even really trying to dress up in like business casual or like anything remotely really nice looking. It's just like because no one really shows up to the offices anymore. And I finally just I'm like, you know what? I'm comfortable enough to just also do that kind of thing. Like, fuck it. Yeah, I'm having to actually put on nice clothes tomorrow because I have a a virtual interview with a new school district oh so you actually oh did you ultimately tell the i know you were posting this on like twitter a while back like do you tell you know your current guy and did you so i did and it's gotten confusing because i so i got in to the application pool for this job yeah. for this other job and so i went and told my principal like hey just heads up for one is fair one for whatever scheduling I will be interviewing. I don't know if anything's going to come from it, but I will be interviewing. And he's like, cool. I'll keep that in mind when building the master schedule, we'll figure it out as we go. And just let me know once you know something for sure. Mm-hmm. And so I was talking with this other school, um, and they were like, uh, they were 
stringing me along for a while and they changed the goalposts a little bit. The position changed a couple of times and I kept saying, I'm still interested. I'm still interested. And then someone from the school emailed me and said like, Hey, thanks for sending in your application. But if you aren't certified in both of these subjects that we're looking you to fill uh, for in this case, at this point, it was theater and also art, Mm. uh, then don't bother like applying. Like we'll keep you on file, but we're not interested. And I'm like, okay. And so I emailed my principal and I was like, my principal from my old school or current school, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I was like, hey, uh, it looks like I'm going to be sticking around after all. Uh, can I lock in getting my advanced classes next year? And he was like, I can't make that guarantee. We'll see how things shake out. And I'm like, oh, well, that kind of sucks. Like God. I was going to get them before. Uh, and then I got a, a call today from the new school saying like, hey, we are wanting to interview you, do like a screener interview online. Uh, tomorrow can you do that and I'm like okay this was a call from a different lady than the one that told me like basically piss off that you don't have a dual certification Uh, and I was like uh, are these people just not in communication or did they realize that finding a dual certified teacher in this hiring climate right now where no one even wants to be a teacher is unrealistic Mm -hmm. Um, but I was like sure I'll do the interview and I haven't emailed or texted my my current principal back to let him know the situation because i'm like you know what i may have screwed myself over by jumping the gun saying i'm coming back so i'm gonna wait until anything is absolutely 100 percent concrete before i start saying stuff yeah but that's kind of annoying that you, you got boned like a like a two-way boning yeah <laughs> that is what it is um yeah that's that's annoying um that reminds me. That reminds me of like back when I was like desperate to find a job to stay in Texas right out of college, and then mm. I got a call from SWC being like, "Oh, you got the job." And I was like, "Thank God, I needed to stay in Texas," kind of thing. And then like mm. two days later, after they called me and said I got the job and stuff, I got like a form <laughs> email <laughs> sent to me that was like, "Sorry," that was like, "Oh, that was on my phone." Um, sorry to uh to inform you but we're we're looking we're gonna hire someone else kind of thing and there was like a panicky moment where i was like wait i literally got a call saying i got the job or whatever and then a form email being like you're not hired and we're going with someone else kind of thing mm-hmm. so that was well i mean that was just a, a a drop in the bucket of the mismanagement of that company oh i mean no i i mean i don't mean to sh- I don't mean to shit talk previous employers, and I would, I would never shit talk current employers either. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what they say: there are three types of employers. <laughs> um, yes, the the thinking man's employers, uh, <laughs> the uh, ones that do, um, you know, you might be a redneck and puppets, and the third one that I just will move along from. The, the nebulous third type of employer. Yep exactly um <laughs> that, that feels like a good way to wrap it and i don't know if you heard my phone but i think it made a noise because it was low on battery i think that's what that I noise didn't, means i didn't hear it but i'm trying to get this dog to go to the bathroom anyway so okay well i'll let you go i appreciate the phone call and conversation it was fun and i guess funner than me loading into neo the world ends with you and trying to figure out what the fuck i was doing last time i played yeah and now you can safely absolve yourself of I think I think this is the end of the series, yeah. And I think mm-hmm. I think I'll just close the guide window tab that I have on pulled up on Chrome and just you know, just say that it was good effort put in. I did I did collect all the food. I was checking the records. Ninety five out of ninety five food items. That's something, right? There you go. That is certainly something. It's certainly something. I cannot <laughs> deny that. No. It's, it was a thing I did. <laughs> put that one up on the refrigerator nice i think i will all right uh you have yourself a nice rest of your wednesday night and thursday as well i will try you gotta be up early to take this dog to get his balls cut off oh exciting yeah (laughs) super exciting always spayed and new year pets yep that's uh the the bob barker way the the bob barker and bub turn away yeah, everyone associates me and Bob Barker with that 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 saying. Well, because of your sordid uh, 
romantic affair with Bob Barker, yes, you guys are kind of intrinsically tangled in that way. Well, now that that's out, yeah, I guess I can admit mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. All right. Bye. Okay, bye. Uh, that was fun. And ultimately, this is going to go down as one of the, I'm going to say, I'll say it, one of the best episodes of the stream ever in the years that I've done it because, well, well, that's me being hyperbole. But honestly, if that's what it takes for me to understand that I should probably not waste hours and hours, we only have so many hours on this planet, you know? We can, this was a fun hour stream, right? I load up the game. I'm like walking around confused and then go, you know what? It's unneeded. It's unneeded. You know what? We save 73% complete. It's almost three fourths. Almost three fourths. I loved, I not, okay. I shouldn't say loved. I had a lot of complaints about this game. If you go back and watch the other bit of the, uh, the actual main series of me playing through this game. I had my complaints about it, but I'm glad it came out. I fear that we're probably not going to get another sequel to this game ever again, because apparently I think Square Enix said that sales were disappointing to them. But that's all stuff I said probably at the begin or at the end of the game, way back when. Um, yeah, just make the determination that it's not needed. Well, I don't need to play it. I don't need 100% this. I think it's a good idea, and at the time it sounded like a good idea. But it is so true that, like, as I've gotten older, it is harder and harder to care about completing 100% of games. Like, 100% in games that where it's clear, like I said, Death Stranding during the phone call there, ones that are just going to be just a huge time sink. Because I would rather use those hours to play a game I've never played before, or want to experience a game, or do other things other than gaming, you know? So... But still a fun episode. This is a fun stream. <laughs> you got to, fr- like I said, friend of the stream. He's been on the stream before. We've done things with him, uh, and IRL friend as well. Um, and that'll that'll not only do it for the series, but the street, the stream, and the series. The series. Uh, if you ended up watching this on the archive, because I'll probably name it something about the hundred percent probably, or in theory, it was that was always going to be the goal, I guess. Um, and then you stuck around and listened to the phone call. Uh, have yourself a lovely day if you listen to it. If you watch this and you're like, oh, God, this isn't what I came here for. But it's fine. We got to listen to Beat Talk. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's call it a stream. That was a fun hour. Uh, I'll close this guide. I don't need it anymore. <laughs> This trophy guide and list of pig noise, and we'll just come back Friday night for a stream. We'll make it up. We'll do probably Friday night since we haven't played in a while. We'll probably do start chapter two of Justice for All Phoenix Wright. So we'll come back to that game strong and uh, have uh, have a great Friday night stream. Um, other than that, <laughs> uh, uh, and um. Yeah, we'll uh, be back Friday night. So until then, enjoy enjoy your, because I'm off Tuesday, or Thursday. Oh my God, I, can't, I don't even know what day of the week it is. Goodbye, and until Friday night.